Hey guys, I have to revisit something I thought was killed some time ago, and I thought was properly dead. But it seems some zealots can't bury the corpse, or don't want to. What prompted this video is that Muslims are still today, using an article written in 2006 by British writer Paul Valadie, How Islamic Inventors Changed the World. He wrote this, well one of the gods will know why, I sure don't, as an introduction to the exhibition which has been sufficiently exposed by Klingshaw and me in, in separate videos. He brings up 20 examples which include the top inventions by the religious ideology of Islam, one of the top inventions being, of course, the three-course meal. Nobody else in history has managed to come up with this idea, and it took a devout and pious Muslim to invent eating something, then something more, and then, well, finish by eating something. <coughs> oh boy, are not these people embarrassed by anything? Oh. Okay, what is odd is that something like chess is included in this list. When, I mean, Sahih Muslim clearly writes in 2856-12, he who played chess is like one who dyed his hand with the flesh and blood of swine. But then, good old Muhammad did not know that this would not be taken too seriously either a few centuries down the line. None of you should walk wearing one shoe only. <coughs> significant. Now, while we're on the topic of hadiths, there are several regarding the prohibition of alcohol, its production, trade and usage. Yet something which was improved on by Arabs and probably Muslims was the distilling of alcohol using an alembic. When words like alcohol or alchemy point to Arabic roots, the malhayat or water of life aquavit appears several times in the Arabic fables and stories. It seems distilling using an alambic, the Arabic word alambic, was introduced to Europe by Fatimid Caliph of Cairo via Sicily, as was the drink arak, the sweat of wine. Everyone who has spent time in the Middle East will know distilled sugar water, Siddiq or just Sid for short, which is homemade and then watered down with coke or whatever. So, what exactly did these admittedly brilliant scientists from the Middle East do? Well, they consolidated the available knowledge, translated it into Arabic and researched the existing technologies and knowledge and thereby improved, advanced and furthered the scientific knowledge of that era. What they did not do is invent anything significant or discover anything revolutionary. In addition, the people doing the work were not only Muslims and Islam has nothing whatsoever to do with this. In fact, some of them hated religions and, and people like Al-Razi, he actually mocked the Quran. Someone who did discover something revolutionary was Isaac Newton. And he was a Christian, yet we don't call gravity and Newton's laws Christian science or Christian inventions. I mean, that's nonsensical. So, but why does Islamic propaganda still work and why are these false and long refuted claims still circulating? Well, in, in my eyes, I think there's multiple reasons. One is that some Muslims are liars and are only interested in getting their hands on a slice from the zakat pie. Another is that they want bonus points by converting unsuspecting people to Islam, by trying to impress them with their fabrications. Another reason could be is that Muslims are not trained in critical thinking in, in general. So if you read the text a little bit more carefully, you'll see that it often says things like probably or the story goes, a form of, developed into, thought to be, it's not clear, or things like invented in 634 for a Persian caliph. Not actually saying who invented it, but insinuating or suggesting that it just might have been a Muslim. Muslims are easily impressed and are taught to obey and not to question anything, so people running shows like the 1001 Inventions are simply trying to instill false pride into the people following the ideology, making it look more scientific than it actually is. 
Also, some are just zealots who, who are satisfied with providing Muslims with feel-good propaganda. And, I mean, one such case was exposed on, on Wikipedia not so long ago. This character manipulated some 60,000 entries on Wikipedia with Islamist lies. He falsified, tricked, lied, forged, misrepresented, fabricated propaganda, which was favorable for Muslims. Now, here's here's the, the, the call for the comment, and now I'll really quickly scroll down all the evidence that was that was collected inside of Wikipedia, just to make sure that this has a clean account later on. So, I don't know how many times my attempts at providing neutral and objective descriptions in Wikipedia were deleted and replaced by Islamist propaganda. But people like this get away with their manipulations because they are simply too numerous to track. They are the kind of people who don't care about the overall loss of reputation or the consequences of their lies, just the cheap thrill of posting stupid and false propaganda. Humans can be egocentrics at times and not too clever, which makes a detrimental mix. So please, if you are a Muslim and you have believed or you do believe that there was an Islamic golden age, please, please, please forget this and substitute this with facts. What is most frequently misrepresented is numbers and maths. No, numbers were not invented by Arabs, but are something like 30,000 years old. In, in Europe, we don't actually use Arab numerals, even though we call them this. I mean, this is a better timeline showing the development of, of Indic Arabic numerals and how we use them today. And then we get to the topic of algebra. This seems to be a favorite. Try, I mean, if you try and enter something into Google, like history, algebra, timeline, for example, and then you look at the results. Ah, you can see I've been here before. This is algebra.com, a page dedicated to algebra. And on the page history of algebra, it tells you from the experts that algebra goes back to ancient Egypt and even Babylon, not the medieval Arabs. If I go to the, the history of algebra, a page primarily made for educational purposes, it says again right there that algebra goes all the way back to the Babylonians and mentions the text written by the Chinese and jumping to the more recent developments. They then explain the origin of the name, not the function or the contents of that name. Finally, if you still want more evidence, here's a simple timeline starting in the year 250 CE with a Greek mathematician. And then it goes on to others, and, and then only in 830 CE does it go to Khwarizmi, the Persian mathematician, who was probably Zoroastrian, not Muslim at all, and his book on algebra. This is how easy it is to get information which is substantiated by others and, and which has corresponding texts just using Google. There's no need to rely on fabricated texts, even if they sound so nice. So we see that People a thousand years ago, during the Arab Golden Age, or whatever you want to call it, did not make any significant inventions or discoveries or contributions to mankind. They were brilliant people of all walks of life, from different nations of different beliefs or no beliefs, and research science and thus consolidated, furthered and advanced the existing scientific understanding and knowledge of that time. Is all that the Muslim community can contribute to mankind today the finger amputation machine delivering Sharia punishments? I mean, just because a Muslim a thousand years ago could hum a tune does not make him the inventor of the Walkman. Thanks for your time. <laughs>